In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can easily create a dynamic bobblehead rig inside of Cinema 4D. We're gonna have a lot of fun in this one, so let's check it out. The Dynamics engine inside of Cinema 4D is not only powerful, but it's really easy to use. Now to build this bobblehead rig, we're gonna be using a couple of objects that you might not have ever used or heard of before. Those two things are called connectors and springs. So if this is new to you, this is gonna be a really good demonstration as far as what those objects can do in the Dynamics system. So if you wanna follow along with the tutorial, be sure to download the project files. You can find the link in the description below. So let's go ahead and dive right in, build our bobblehead. All right, so here's our Cloud Boy character that we're going to bobbleheadify here. And I'm just gonna set the scene, show what I have. This project file is gonna be made available to download. So check that out and you can pick it apart and all that good stuff. But basically for a bobblehead, we need the body and the head separated. Okay, so if you twirl down the body and all and the head and all, you can see all the objects that make up the head and the body. I like to group everything underneath their own little nulls here. So they're group null. So I have the body null and the head null that all the objects that make up those two separate pieces are underneath. But it's also important that the axis center of your objects are kind of centered to the center of your head and your body. Okay. So it's just important for pivot points and stuff like that as we start to build our bobblehead. So Name of the tutorial is Bobblehead Dynamics. So we're gonna utilize Dynamics to get this bobblehead effect. So to add Dynamics to objects, we're gonna go ahead and use two different types of Dynamics, okay? So our body, we don't actually need to have fall and have gravity and physics brought onto it. We just need it to be collided into by the head, okay? So what I'm gonna do is on this body null, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go down to simulation tags and I'm gonna choose collider body. Now this is going to make our object stay put, but allow it to be collided into and be recognized in the dynamic simulation in our scene here. So I'm gonna add collider body and there's a couple settings that we need to change here. If we go to the collision tab here, in R21, the default values here are different than what you may have in older versions. So I'm just gonna cover what settings we need for this body null here, okay? So in the collision tab, we have this inherit tag that says, okay, what do you want this tag to do to children objects? So the children of the main object that you apply the dynamics tag to. And right now it's saying in the inherit tag, it's gonna apply the tag to the children. Now, if we go and check out what other options we have here, we have this compound collision shape. And basically this is the one we want because we just want all of those objects to be treated as one singular collidable into object. So I'm just gonna choose compound collision shape. And for individual elements, I'm just gonna turn this off because I don't want the arms, the feet, and the body to be recognized as individual objects and have like the, the arms fly off or anything like that. So I'm just gonna turn the individual elements to off. And as far as the shape goes, the default in R21 is static mesh. And basically this is a more accurate calculation that takes into account all the nooks and crannies of the actual geometry that we're using for the body. But the problem is, is it kind of slows down your viewport because it's a more intensive and accurate calculation. So what I'm gonna do is just choose automatic. In older versions of Cinema 4D, automatic is the default shape that we'll use. And this is what we're gonna use for this as well. It's less accurate, but it's way faster for playback. So I'm gonna choose automatic and basically this puts like a shrink wrap around our character. So we get just enough detail that other objects can kind of collide into it, okay? So I'm just gonna twirl that up and on our head, I'm gonna right click and we want this to actually fall. So let me just move this up in the Y just so we can give this some space to kind of fall down. And I'm gonna right click on the head and go back to simulation tags. And instead of collider body, we're gonna add rigid body. And this is gonna allow us to not have this object just be collided into, but we want this object to fall and have gravity affect it. Okay, so I'm gonna add my rigid body tag. And again, we're gonna go in the collision tab and change some settings. So the inherit tag, again, we want this head to be treated as one single piece of geometry so the eyes and the tongue don't kind of fly out. So what I'm gonna do is change this inherit tag to compound collision shape. So the all the objects that make up the head will be treated as one kind of fused together object. 
Now for individual elements, we again don't want the dynamics tag to be applied to each of these individual objects. So I'm gonna just change this to off, turn individual elements off. So you can see with the rigid body tag, the shape is already set to automatic, so we don't need to change anything there. So this is great. Now let's just go ahead and we're gonna go back to frame zero and we're gonna see the dynamic simulation by hitting play, okay? So I'm gonna hit play and it's gonna take just a second to kind of calculate here, but the head's just gonna kind of fall and roll off. And if I go back to frame zero, we're gonna keep doing that. Now, the default frame range that you have in a project is 90. So what I did is I just up this to 300. We can even go to 400 by just entering in a number, hitting enter, and then just dragging this little bracket to expand the playhead. Now we have 400 frames to see this full simulation. I'm just gonna hit play and the head just kind of rolls off. So that's not a bobblehead. That's a broken bobblehead actually. So I'm just gonna go back to frame zero. We actually need to have this head stay in place, okay? So what I'm gonna do is in the force tab, we have the ability to allow the object, the dynamic object to follow position, and follow rotation of the initial position and rotation that the object's at when the dynamic simulation starts. So frame zero, this is the starting point of our head. So if I want this to stay and try to maintain this position and rotation in the scene, I can up these values. So if I enter in like five for follow position and five for follow rotation, let's go ahead and hit play. And you see that kind of dips a little bit, but it's trying to maintain the position and rotation that it was initially at. Now here's what's cool. If I go to my Cloud Boy parent null that has both the head and the body here, I can move this around. And since I'm moving both of my objects, that head is going to try to get back to the initial position and rotation that is right over the body here, okay? So it's trying to get back. We have this little cool floaty head thing, which in itself is pretty cool. Dynamics is like my video game. Like I don't play video games, but I play the heck out of Dynamics and you can see how fun this is. Okay, so we're kind of getting a bobbleheady kind of effect here by just adding that follow position and rotation. So on this Cloud Boy Null, I'm just gonna bring this back to its initial position. So I'm just gonna click this reset PSR button. Now this is docked in R21. If you don't have this docked in your version of Cinema 4D, we can bring up reset PSR very easily. Let me just go ahead and hit escape to pause my playback there. And I'm just gonna hold shift and C to bring up the commander. And here you can enter in any thing that you want. So any function or command. So I'm just gonna reset, just type in reset and then PSR and that's gonna bring up that, and I can just hit return, and that will also reset PSR. So that's an easy way to do that. Shift C, Commander is so useful, okay? So we have this all set up. Let's go back to frame zero, and we have this head just kind of floating around with that follow position, follow rotation. So we don't have any springy movements just yet. So what we're gonna to do to add that springy movement is what's called a spring object. So what I'm gonna do is go into the simulate menu here and I'm gonna to go to dynamics and we're gonna be living with these two little objects here. And they're very, they're not very used uh, as far as my experience goes. They're kind of hidden. They, they got introduced, you know, 70 years ago or something like that to Cinema 4D, but they're very, very useful and very powerful. So we're gonna go ahead and just start by adding the spring object first. And this is going to allow us to define two objects that will have a springy relationship between those two objects. So again, all of these little objects in here rely on them being applied to dynamic objects, okay? So between two dynamic objects, we're gonna build a springy relationship. So let's just go ahead and drag and drop this spring object underneath the Cloud Boy null or apparent null of our head and our body. And you can see that we have a uh, type of spring that we can use. We can use linear or angular or linear and angular, okay? So that means we can either have springs that just happen linearly, or we can have springs added whenever there's any kind of rotational movement. So we'll get that rotational angular spring. So we don't want one or the other, we actually want both. Because a bobblehead will spring up and down and also if you rotate it. So I'm just gonna go and choose linear and angular. And you can see we have this little spring here. It's a little angular spring. And what I'm gonna do is just define the objects that I want to connect together to build that springy relationship. So object A 
is going to be the body. That's going to be the anchored object. So I'm just going to drag and drop the body null into object A. And then for object B, I'm just going to drag and drop the head. And you can see that when I drag and drop the head and the body, we not only have this angular spring, but we also have this coil spring, which is really cool. And you can see that this is a really cool representation of what this spring object is doing. So we have this imaginary coil spring and this angular spring that's kind of building that springy connection between these two dynamic objects. So let's go ahead and let's just hit play. And you can see that the head just kind of falls down. And if I select my cloud boy parent null and move this around, we got this cool kind of springy movement, kind of. But you can see that the spring almost looks like it's too short. Now, when I clicked off of that spring object here, we no longer got that kind of cool little visual reference. So I'm going to want to see this just for demonstration purposes the entire time. So if I go to the display tab, I can say, always have this guide visible, the spring guides. I'm just going to check that on. And then when I deselect my spring object, we still see the little spring guide. So if I go back to frame zero, hit play, you can see the spring kind of moving up and down with our visual guide there. So I'm just going to hit escape to stop that playback. Go back to frame zero. We're going to be doing this a lot, going back to frame zero to reset the dynamic stimulation. And let's go back to our spring object and kind of see what's going on here. So why does our spring just kind of fall? Well, that's because if we go to our object tab, we have a default rest length. That's basically the rest length of our spring, our linear spring. We have our linear spring values here and then our angular spring values down here. So we're just going to concern ourselves with this rest length. And that's basically the default length of our spring. And right now, 100 centimeters, I think our head's actually floating way above 100 centimeters. So what we can do, instead of trying to guess what the distance between the main body part here, the, the anchor point here, you can see that's where the spring's connected here and the spring's connected to the head right here. Again, those are the anchor points. Again, that's why it's important to have aligned anchor points on both your head and your body there. You can see that. If we go and we go to our spring, we can actually hit this set rest length. So this is going to take the distance between the anchor point of your body and your head or object A and object B and reset that distance. So I'm going to set rest length and you can see that our rest length jumped up to 246.529. It's very precise. And if we go ahead and hit play now, our head stays up because our spring is long enough before it was too short and brought the head down. So now what I can do is get my cloud boy null, move this around. And you can see that we have a much longer length spring and we get this cool springy movement, which is really, really nice. And if I move this around, you can see that the head is going to spring also rotationally if I rotate this. And we're going to get that springy movement. But you can see that the head, while we have this really cool springy movement, uh, the head just kind of go on all willy nilly. And it's almost like this is a springy balloon versus a bobblehead. So I'm going to go and reset PSR again and go back to frame zero. And let's go and play with a few more settings here. So we have the stiffness value, which is basically the stiffness of the spring. So the stiffer the spring, the more fast oscillation that we'll get with that spring. So if I up the stiffness to about, let's do seven, and we'll also adjust the stiffness in the angular spring as well. Let's go ahead and hit play and see what we got here. So I'm going to go to my move tool and just move my cloud boy null around. And you can see that with that stiffer spring, that tighter spring, we're getting these really cool tight oscillations. Now also getting that rotational uh, springiness, which is really nice. But again, our head's just kind of flying all over the place. So while we added really nice springy movement, we need to have our head kind of stay in place and be restricted as far as how it moves around. And, you know, we don't want the head to go below the body or anything like that. So again, I'm going to hit escape to stop the playback, go to frame zero and reset PSR on my main null here. And let's go ahead and we have the springy relationship between the body and the head, but we need to build more relationships between these two objects, the body and the head, to make the head be restricted as far as where it goes. Like we don't want the head to go all the way below the body. So we want to restrict how far it can rotate uh, around. So for that, we're going to go back into our simulate menu 
and we're going to go to dynamics and we're going to use a connector object. Now there's my connector object. You can see immediately that there's a bunch of different types of connectors that we can use. So we can use a hinge, which is basically, if you think of a door hinge, you have that anchor point to the side of the door and then the hinge allows the door to rotate around that anchor point. Uh, we also have a bunch of different options here as well. But the one thing we're going to be concerned with first is this ragdoll type. Now what this ragdoll type allows us to do, you can see this little cone. And if I rotate around, you can see it's a, a ball and a cone. And basically what this allows an object to do is rotate around this axis point and only allows, if, it's almost like if there was a ball and then a stick out here, and this stick could only bounce around and rotate based off this axis center or pivot point and stay within that cone. It's almost like you put a cone on a dog so the dog can't, you know, lick his back or whatever. It's kind of like the same thing. It's the cone of shame, right, from uh, up. But what we're going to do is this cone is not facing the right direction, so we're just going to hit the R key to bring up our rotation, and we're going to highlight this axis band here. I'm just going to click and drag and hold down the shift key to constrain this to increments of five degrees and just rotate this up 90 degrees. And I can just go ahead, hit the E key, get my move tool and just move this up. So right now our connector is a ragdoll. So let me just rename this to ragdoll. And let's just move this underneath that cloud boy parent null there. And again, we need to build the relationship. We need to define the objects that we want to build that ragdoll connector relationship with. So our anchor is going to be the body. So we'll make that object A. Then for object B, we can make this the head. Now you're going to see that once I place the head in there, we got this stick here. So if I move this over, you can see that now we have this pivot point, but it also has this little stick that's kind of coming out of it. So you can see that the stick will be constrained within this cone. We can adjust that cone radius here as well. So that little stick will only be able to rotate around inside this cone. So let me go ahead and hit Command Z to undo those moves. And let's go ahead and hit play and see what this ragdoll actually does. So if I hit play and select the parent null, the cloud boy null, and move this around, sometimes I need to go back to frame zero again just so this works. Okay, there we go. It's working again. And again, you're really not seeing the ragdoll guide anymore. So I'm going to go to display and check on always visible. And now you can see there's that stick and why our head is just kind of stuck there is that our ragdoll is constricting the rotation of the head from this pivot to within this cone. So let's go back to frame zero and let's do this again. Selecting the cloud boy null and I'm moving this around again. Sometimes it doesn't work and you go back to frame zero and let's do this again. Now you can see that that little stick rotating around and it's constrained within that cone. So I can rotate this as well. And you can see that the stick or it's like the head's almost on a stick and it's rotating from this pivot point and it's within that cone. So that's basically what a ragdoll is. So if you if you consider this, you know, a character, you don't want arms as like a character's falling. You want the arms to rotate and intersect the torso. So this is kind of what this is doing. And again, sometimes when I move this, I need to go back to frame zero to activate this correctly. So this is a little gotcha. If you just keep going back to frame zero, this should work. And there we go. So we have our head restricted, but you'll notice that the ragdoll restricts the linear up and down movement of our head. So we just lost that. Okay. So if I move this up and down, you can see that we're getting a little bit of spring, but not a lot of linear movement here. So I'm going to go back to reset PSR. Let's go back to frame zero and we got everything back in their original position. So what I need to do is I need to build in the ability for my head to move up and down or slide up and down based on this little pull that we have coming from our ragdoll. So what we're going to do is use yet another connector. So if I go to my simulate dynamics connector, I'm going to make this a child of the cloud boy null. And if we go to let's just since we're in the display tab, let's just make that always visible. So we're always seeing that little visual guide in our viewport. And let's just go to our object tab here. And for this type, we're going to want a slider. OK, so if I choose slider, you can see that we just have this stick that's currently impaling our character. And basically what this connector allows us to do, this slider is allows an object to slide up and down on this little pole here. OK, so I'm going to 
reset PSR on that connector. And you can see that this is not rotated the right way. So I'm gonna hit the R key to bring up my rotation tool and just rotate this again, holding the shift key to constrain this to increments of five degrees and just rotate it 90 degrees there. And now you'll see the stick is up and down. It's vertical now. So now what we can do is let's first rename this connector to slider. And again, we're gonna define the objects that we wanna build that relationship between. So we're gonna again have the body as the anchor and then the head as the object B. So now if I go ahead and I hit play, select that parent null and move this up and down again, I need to go back to frame zero because sometimes it just doesn't take. And now you're seeing, whoops, we have no movement whatsoever. So what's going on? Let's go ahead and hit escape there. So what we just did is we have the ragdoll and the slider working at the same time. And basically they're kind of canceling themselves out because we have the ragdoll limiting the movement in the rotation, but it's also limiting the head from moving linearly. And our slider is allowing our head to move up and down, but not angularly or rotationally. So they're both allowing different things, but negating and not allowing different other types of movements. So they're kind of canceling each other out. Our head can't move at all. So let's go ahead and let's just see what the slider does standalone. So I'm just gonna deactivate the ragdoll by clicking on this little checkbox and making an X to deactivate the ragdoll. And now we can just see what the slider is doing. And if I hit play and move this up and down, you can see, okay, we're getting that sliding springy movement. And that's basically what the slider is doing. But again, the slider is not allowing my head to move rotationally or angularly off the body, okay? So that's what the slider is doing. So what we need to do once we hit reset PSR again to bring everything back to normal and go back to frame zero is we need to basically have the ragdoll and the slider work together. So the problem with the ragdoll is that it doesn't allow the head to move up and down. So maybe instead of having the ragdoll being anchored to the body, maybe we'll anchor it to the slider. So if we anchor it to the slider, the ragdoll should be able to move up and down, allow the head to move up and down and still constrict the angular movement of our head. So we can actually have connectors connected to other connectors. So we have connector inception going on here. So what we'll wanna have is the slider as that anchor and have it still attached to the head. And if we go to the slider now, you'll notice that this actually updated automatically. So on the slider, the anchor is still the body, but now the object B that the body is connected to is that ragdoll. So let's go ahead and see what this does. So if I hit play, go to my cloud boy parent null and move this around. Again, we're gonna have to, this isn't taking, so I'm gonna go back to frame zero and there we go. And now you see that our ragdoll, that cone is sliding up and down on that slider, which is really cool. And then we just have that slider connected to the body. So the slider is allowing the ragdoll to move up and down on that pole. And then the ragdoll is limiting the angular movement of our head, which is really, this is exactly what we want. We want that combination ragdoll with that linear up and down movement. And we just did that by combining the ragdoll and the slider together. And again, if we really zoom in here and see what all these things are visually doing, it's really, really cool. And now we have this really cool bobbly head type of movement, which is really awesome, okay? So if we go back to frame zero and hit reset PSR, let's go ahead and let's maybe tweak some things. So first thing we can do is we can go to our spring and maybe we want to offset the spring axis center from being here and maybe have it down here. Maybe have the object A center of mass be right up here. So we can actually adjust and offset the center of mass or where that spring starts and ends just right here. And we can also go and move this head up even more if we want to and go to our spring and hit that set rest length to take into account the further distance we move that head up and we can hit play. And now you can see that now we got the head really moving around here, which is cool. Let's go back to frame zero, hit reset PSR, and let's go to the spring and let's adjust 
where that rotational point or pivot will be. So instead of the center of mass, we can go and change this to offset. And here we have the ability to offset this point in the body and the head. If I go ahead and adjust this to offset in the attachment B here too, we can offset both where this is connected, the body and the head, and offset in X, Y, and Z. So if I adjust this in the Y, you can see I'm moving the bottom of that little visual spring there to be like the top of the head. And then I can go ahead and adjust this offset here. And instead of having the axis point or the anchor point up here, I can move this down to right at the neck or at the base of the head, okay? So now what we can do is since we adjusted the offset, we're gonna hit that set rest length because we move the length of that spring. So set rest length, now it's set to 225.864. Let's go ahead and hit play. And now you can see what's going on here. So you can see that once we have this rotating too much, we can kind of get some crazy stuff going on. So maybe we don't want the head or the neck to be offset at all. So let's just reset this to center of mass and center of mass. But I wanted to show you that you can at least change that and offset that if you want. Let's go ahead and just set that rest length again. And there we go. Now let's talk about some other settings here. We have the stiffness, so we can up that even more if we want to, but we also have the damping, which makes the springy oscillations kind of lose power faster or slower. So the higher the damping value, the quicker those little springy oscillations, those secondary oscillations will come to a rest. So if you want very little, whoops, I'm just moving the spring. Let's just make sure we're moving that cloud boy head and go back to frame zero. You can see that there's very, there's like no oscillation whatsoever because we took it all away using the high damping value. But if we make this say five, in five for the linear and the angular, go back to frame zero and move this cloud boy null around, go back to frame zero again. You can see that we're getting these really good secondary oscillations and they're really springing quite a bit. So you can always art direct that and control how stiff you want your spring and also how quick the damping or the, the oscillation, the springiness kind of comes to a rest, okay? So, Maybe we'll just choose a value of 10% for both those things. And again, we can also adjust the head here. We go to head and move this down. We can maybe set this right about there. And all we need to do is once we move the head, just reset that rest length and that will go ahead and update. And now we can you know, use this again. So if we go back to frame zero, reset PSR. You can see that we have all of these really cool guides, but if we go ahead and render though, you're not gonna see, like we have no visual spring there whatsoever. These are only the guides. So what we can do is we can go ahead and add an actual spring in here. So to do that, let's go and just go to our spline tools. Let's grab a helix and let's place this underneath our little cloud boy null. And let's change the plane to X, Z. So it's facing upwards. And then let's change the start and end radius here to maybe, let's see, let's move this on up. Let's move the axis center of the start of this helix to right to where the neck is. And kind of have a little bit of overlap there. Let's have this be about 10 and let's do the end radius of 10 as well. Now this height's way too much so we can bring down the height there and there's the top of our helix right there. Let's just move this up again. We want a little bit of overlap of the head and the neck so we don't see any gaps when we add the uh, springiness back in there. But let's go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. We can do that by adding more coils and adjust this end angle. And you can see now we're getting way more little coils in there. Maybe we up the start and end radius here so we get even thicker kind of spring. So I'm digging that. I think I like that quite a bit. So there we go, we have our spline. Again, that's not gonna render, so let's create some geometry with it by using a sweep object. And for a sweep object to make geometry based on this helix spline, we need to also define a profile spline. So we'll just create a circle spline, place this underneath the sweep, and then we'll place the helix underneath the sweep as well. So we have the sweep, and then the circle, and then the helix is a child of the sweep. And the circle spline, the first spline here underneath the sweep is gonna be the profile spline. 
So if I shrink this down, it's way too big. If I shrink this down, you can see that this circle is being swept along this helix in creating this little spring geometry here. So if we double click on our sweep, rename this spring, there we go. We have our nice little spring here. And one thing we can do is since we, we already know what all these sliders and ragdoll and springs do, we can just select all of these little connectors here by holding the shift key, go to display and just unchecking that. So now we don't see that cluttering up the viewport anymore and we can now more clearly see our actual spring geometry here, which is really nice, okay? So we go ahead and we hit play and we move this around. You can see that the spring is just stationary. So we need to be able to connect this to the head. We also need the spring to kind of change its height based on how high the head is moving up or down. Okay, and we also need this spring to kind of face and aim at wherever the head is so it looks like this spring is connected. So we can hit escape to stop, playback, go back to frame zero, reset PSR so we're back where we started from. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of espresso. Now I know I said the X word, but this is going to be one of the easiest ways to get into espresso. okay? It's really not that hard because basically all we need to do is we need to link the height or the Y position of the head to kind of add on to or subtract from the height of this helix spline or this helix object, okay? So what we're gonna do to build that relationship between the position Y of our head and the height of the helix is we're gonna right click on position Y. So not all of these, we're just gonna select that Y. So we highlight the Y, we're gonna right click, we're gonna go to expressions, we're gonna say, hey, position Y of this head null be the driver to change values on this helix height. Okay, so that's set up. Let's go to our helix. And on the object tab, we're gonna select this height word and right click and go to expressions. And you're gonna see that we have this set driven available to us. So the driver is the position Y of the head null. And we're gonna set driven relative to the value of height that currently exists. Okay, if we chose absolute, it would just be the same value of the head position y but we want to maintain the initial height we have here so that's why we're choosing relative so set driven relative and once i do that you're going to see these little icons change and you're going to see this espresso tag got added as well so you can see that the position y is linked to the height if we double click you can see that we basically with no node creation at all just did a little bit of espresso go us look at us so it's not that hard so we have the head position being remapped to control and adjust the height of the helix. Okay, so let's see what that actually means. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead, select the Cloudboy Null, hit play, and move this up and down. Now check out what's going on. Our spring is actually moving and oscillating because it's now kind of connected to the head. So if I go to, you know, the head's obviously moving up and down, but if I go to the helix, you can see it's already moving a little bit. Let's just go ahead and lock this little view of our helix. You can see that as I'm moving the Cloudboy Null, which is in turn moving the Y position of the head, we're getting that change in height for the spring and it looks like that spring is oscillating and moving around, which is really, really cool, okay? So one problem we have is that the spring is not facing the head, so it's not rotating towards the direction of the head, so we need to fix that as well. So what we're gonna do is go to our helix, and we're going to say, okay, Helix, always aim your Y axis at the head. So how can we do that? We can do that by right clicking and going to rigging tags and creating a constraint tag. Now what the constraint tag allows us to do, if I unlock this little view here, so I can actually see other menus here, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna say, okay, in the constraints, we have all these different types of constraints. Basically the only one I'm concerned with is this aim, because I just want, to say, hey object, aim at another object, okay? So I'm gonna turn that on, check that on, and that's gonna allow us to access this aim tab. And here's where I can define an object I want this helix object to aim at, and I can choose which axis that I want to aim at the object. So I want to aim at the head, but the axis I want to aim at the head is actually the positive Y, okay? This is the green arrow here. So I'm gonna change the axis from positive Z to positive Y, and then I'm just gonna aim this Y axis at the head. So I'll just change that. You can see that we had a little bit of a switch there. So now if I hit play and I move the Cloudboy Null around, 
you can see that wherever, whoa, 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 wherever the y-axis of the helix is, is going to be always pointing towards the head, which is really cool. So we got this cool little rotationally kind of thing. And now we got this really nice springy movement, which is really nice. Okay. So one thing to kind of concern yourself with is sometimes when you're using constraints and you're using Expresso, you have issues with the calculation in Cinema 4D. So basically, just like effects and after effects, the topmost effects gonna execute first and then everything below it. So right now we have this constraint looking at the head, but the head is down here. So any head movement is actually happening after this constraint tag and this Expresso tag is kind of doing its calculation. So to keep things organized, I'm just gonna collapse the spring and move it below the head. So not a child of the head, but just below the head and the stack so that the head movement, the springs, all the connector simulations will happen. And then the calculation of the constraint and the Expresso tag can do its thing. So we should be able to get less issues and less lag going on there. Okay, so we got this going on. Now, one thing that with your setup you might run into is your head still kind of intersecting your body, okay? And sometimes that might happen. And that's because if you run into that issue, it's because on our slider in our ragdoll, both of our connectors, if I select both of them, you'll see that by default, there's an ignore collisions checked on. Now, we don't want to ignore any collisions going on here. We want those dynamic collisions. So I'm just gonna uncheck that and that'll help us from having any issues there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move this around and we got this really cool bobbly heady kind of movement going on, which is really, really nice. Now, one thing that might happen when you move too fast is that things might not calculate very nicely. You can see that the head just, if I really move fast, things are kind of wacky. So if you move dynamic objects very, very quickly, sometimes there's not enough calculations or dynamic calculations that Cinema 4D is kind of throwing at the dynamic simulation to keep it accurate. So if you run into any issues with the head really going out of whack or anything like that, what we can do is go into the dynamic expert settings and up the calculations per frame so there's more calculating power to get more accurate dynamic simulation. So when you have fast moving objects, it's gonna calculate it way more accurately. So to get into your dynamic expert settings, I'm just gonna hit escape to stop the playback. I'm just gonna hit command or control D and go into my project settings. And there's my dynamics tab there. And under the dynamics tab, we can go to expert settings. Now I up these already, but the defaults are five and 10 for steps per frame and maximum solver iterations per step. So I like to change these values on a value of like two to one. So you can see it's two to one right now. And if I go and use these lower, let's just throw some very low values in here and hit play. And let's move this really quickly. You can see that we can get some really kind of wacky movement going on sometimes. So that's where going back into the dynamic settings and upping these values to say, you know, 15 and 30, that'll throw more calculation power at the dynamics and we'll get much nicer, accurate simulations, which is really nice. Now I'm just, I've been creating this bobblehead by moving this cloud boy null around, but what I could do is let's reset PSR and let's not move our cloud boy and let's create an object that we can go ahead and kind of knock into the head to make it bounce around. So what I'll do is I'll just create a sphere this will be our, let's make this our knocker, knocker. And uh, we can then create, in, and what we can then do is change this into a collider body. So we can make this turn into a wrecking ball that we can bash the head, which we don't wanna hurt our cloud boy here. So we're just gonna gently knock into it. But what I'm gonna do is just right click on our sphere. And just like we added to the body, we're just gonna change this to a collider body. We don't really have to change any of the settings here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play, grab my little sphere here, and just kind of boink, just kind of knock it, knock it around. And we got this cool little bobbly head movement. Now, if you wanted to have this as an animation and have this knocker kind of control this, and you can see that if we knock it too much, we get this little weird spinny thing. But if we knock this, you can see that if I render this, the sphere is going to render. 
So what I'm going to do is just turn off this from rendering in our render by clicking the bottom dot so it changes red so it's hidden from render but still visible in our viewport, okay? So now we can move this around and kind of boink this. Now, what if we want to record the movement of this sphere? Because we'd have to like keyframe all these movements. Well, there's a really cool setting in Cinema 4D that's like motion trace in After Effects. And what it's called in Cinema 4D, I go to the character menu, what that thing is called is cappuccino. So we had espresso, now we have cappuccino. We're gonna be really caffeinated after this tutorial. And what cappuccino allows us to do is record the mouse movements in our viewport and it translates them to keyframes, okay? So you can see that we can record the position scale and rotation of whatever we have here, but really we just need the position recorded of this sphere. And what we can do is we can record the movement in real time. So I'm gonna start real time. And as I move this around, you can see the playhead at the bottom here starts and you can see that that just recorded that movement I just did right there. So let's go ahead and undo that command Z and let's start this real time again. And I'm gonna move my sphere around and you can see that it's creating all these positional keyframes. And I also have this bobblehead bouncing, which is really fun. We got this really cool movement and all of those were translated to keyframes. So all the movement I just did with my mouse cursor, moving the sphere around in my viewport, they're all keyframes now. So if I go to timeline, you can see there's my sphere and there's all my position keyframes. Okay, so really, really cool stuff. So I'll hit play and see what that looks like. So there's our, there's our animation. So we can basically go ahead and just render that. Now, one thing, that's kind of happening is that the head's kind of going really whacked out there for a second. So what we can do to kind of dampen all that stuff is go to our head and go to that force and maybe we up that follow position and follow rotation strength to 10. So this will kind of temper the movements a little bit. So the movements won't be as kind of out of control. So now we're getting a much more constrained kind of movement, which is nice. So the one thing you probably noticed throughout this tutorial is that this spring is not really matched up to the movement of the head. It's kind of lagged. It's very subtle, but it's there, okay? So we can fix this very easily by whenever you're done with your animation, whatever you want to do, the dynamic simulation's looking good, we're going to go to that head dynamics tab and we're going to go to the cache tab here. Basically what we can do now is just bake out that simulation so it's not live, it's actually saved and it's cached. So I'm gonna go in, make sure we check on this include collision data because we do have collisions going on. And I'm just gonna go and click this bake all button. Now it shouldn't take that long to cache that simulation, but watch what happens when this is baked and cached. You can see that we no longer have that lag anymore. And this is looking much, much nicer, okay? So right before you go to render, be sure you cache your simulation. Everything should be working really, really nice. Right, so there you go, a pretty simple bobblehead rig, just utilizing dynamics and connectors in spring. So if you've never played with connectors in spring before, they're so powerful and very versatile. So recommend you go and check out more, check out the help menu in Cinema 4D, because they can do quite a bit. But hopefully you have a lot of fun building your own bobblehead characters, and I can't wait to see bobbleheads everywhere. All right, so hopefully this tutorial gives you a good idea of the kind of power that is included in the Dynamics Engine, and hopefully it inspires you to create your own bobblehead setups and kind of explore and experiment with connectors and springs. So if you want to keep up to date on all the happenings in the industry and Cinema 4D in particular, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to up your game to the next level, be sure to check out our courses page and see all of the courses we have available to you to reach your goals. So hopefully we see a lot of bobbleheads out there. Be sure to tag us. Always love to see everything on the Instagrams. And I can't wait to see you in the next tutorial. Bye, everybody.